Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Civivi Pintail. What the heck is so special about this? It looks like another indistinguishable from the other models Civivi knife, right? Uh, the Civivi Pintail is S35VN and Micarta. I mean, admittedly, yes, it is very similar to other Civivi knives. S35VN and Micarta for $83. I urge you to stick around and listen to my review but uh, this is a recommendable knife. Sometimes I do that when it's just so obviously a good deal. <laughs> if you're new to the knife world, 83 bucks for S35 VN and Micarta is a good deal. I will link this guy down below and you guys can check it out. But again, I want you guys to watch the review so that I can go over this and you guys can decide whether or not certain elements are gonna be for you or not for you. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Also, thank you to... There it is, right there. That's going to be Brew City, EDC, uh, for sending this in for review. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. All right, let's go ahead and do a measurement. This is not a big knife. It's actually a fairly small knife. Overall length is coming in at, gosh, just shy... I'd say it's like 6.75, maybe 6.8. Blade length. Yeah, I'm going to say that's less than three inches. Uh, I think that's safely out of the way of three inches. I know where you're looking. You're like, no, it looks right on the line. Curvature of the camera. It's about 2.9 inches, but I'd still be careful, right? Uh, cutting edge is coming in at about 2.85 inches. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and uh, its little brother, the Ontario Rat Model 2? This is definitely smaller than both. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3 uh, and the Spyderco, wait, did I say Para 3? Spyderco PM2 uh, and the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, definitely, the uh, pintail is definitely smaller than both of those. And last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and uh, the Benchmade uh, Bug Out. And once again, it's smaller than both. Let's go ahead and do a uh, carry profile on this guy. Uh, the thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Fairly similar, the pintail is a little tiny bit thinner. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do size comparison or um, carry profile length and height up against the PM2 and pair three. This guy is shorter than both, and as far as height goes, uh, I mean, lengthwise, it's just nowhere near as long. And then height, yeah, it's also shorter that way. So, pretty good dimensions here. Let's go ahead and weigh it. We are looking at a combination of micarta and steel, you can see this area in here, we've got the little um, cage, the stop pin there is garaged, which is, that's what all this noise and mess is in here, it's the grooves cut out for the garage stops, which is cool, I like to see that, it's a nice little fancy, little saucy touch they threw on there, um, but uh, I like it, I'm not making fun of it, I think it's cool. Um, but anyways, uh, we have steel, and we have micarta, and we have bearings, then we have a thin S35VN blade, I'm gonna guess this thing weighs like 2.5 ounces. That's my guess. Let's find out. Wow, shocker. Yeah, 2.68 ounces. Those are pretty good ratios. I think a lot of people are gonna be happy. And you know what, guys? If you wanna walk around in athletic, short, athletic shorts with this thing in your pocket, knock yourself out. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about my tools. Uh, I think it's gonna be T8 and T8 and T8 and T8 everywhere except for the pocket clip screws, we're used to that, that's good. Typical Civivi, minimal hardware, good to go. How about blade stock thickness? Turn it this way. Uh, probably, oh my gosh, I bet that's 90 thousandths. A eh, little bit more, very thin. Very, very, very thin. Okay, good to go. Uh, it's kind of what I expected here, right? So this is a flipper. It's also a thumb stud opener. Okay, on a little knife, no. No to flippers. I'm sorry. Little flippers, I just don't... It doesn't make sense. If this did not have a flipper, number one, I could easily still deploy it because I can use the thumb studs, no problem, right? Uh, number two, I could get a little bit closer to the edge 
and not have to have my pinky, you know, wiggling out around here. I don't like having to grip a knife with only two or three fingers. I want four fingers on that knife. Why? I don't know. I just do. It bothers me. I don't like having a finger hanging off the edge. I mean, why would you need a full grip if you're really, I mean, are you really going to use a knife of that, you know, this ain't a hard use knife. Are you going to be, you need a grip on that, right? No, but I just don't want to mess around with it. And obviously that has to do with my hand size. I like to think I have a pretty common hand size. If you're a guy and you wear an XL glove, your hands aren't XL. You have a pretty normal size hand, at least in my experience. There are guys out there who have truly XL hands. And I mean like 50% larger than mine. That's an XL hand. Guys walking around and going to Home Depot buying XL gloves, you got regular hands. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to shatter that for you, right? Now, if you have smaller hands, right, maybe you fit on this. And then there you go. Then, then you're fine. Or maybe you just don't care, right? But I'm just giving you, I'm just telling you what I think. This is just, you know, the whole channel is just my opinions. Um, if this knife were slightly larger or if there were no flipper tab, I think that would have would be better. Honestly, I think I, I personally would like it if this knife were slightly larger for a bunch of different reasons. But anyways, the ergonomic position that you are forced into is okay. It's nothing special. It's typical Civivi. You have the goose bill or the goose bill, uh, neck pocket clip that you are definitely going to fill. But oh no, you know, it's not like your day's ruined, you know, or the world is going to end because the pocket clip is, ah, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, you're just going to get this out, cut, and then put it away, right? You're probably, you're, you're not even going to hold it like this. You're going to hold it like this and cut into a box, right? But pocket clip, for those of you who are going to grip it like that and cut for, you know, more than one cut, then you're probably going to feel that. My Micarta looks good. Steel liners look good. It's typical Civivi fit and finish. If you don't know, Civivi has really good fit and finish. Thumb stud is in a great place, nice and low. However, and when I say great place, I mean for deployment, because it is low, and I mean when it's closed, and that makes it easier to, well, in this case, it makes it easier to engage. They probably could have put it up here and solved this issue, and that is that the thumb stud is in the cutting path. We don't have a lot of, you know, blade to begin with, so look at that, you know. Also, this makes me mad. <laughs> so if you're going to push this blade into thick cardboard, it's, this is where your index finger is going to be locked in right here. And this is how far away you are from the cutting edge if you're going to cut straight down and get it to pass that thumb stud. Stupid. <laughs> Just move the thumb stud back or up here. It's fine. You can still get at it, right? And then get rid of the flipper tab so you can choke up behind the blade a little more. But okay, you know, I'm a nitpicky, I'm a nitpicky person. It's really not that big of a deal, especially if you're doing, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to be cutting straight down. You're going to be cutting, you're just only going to be going that far into the material you're cutting. Or if you are going deep, you're going to be cutting at an angle and you'll clear that thumb stud. I have no idea what the coating is. Uh, I doubt that it's very durable, but it is black and it's a VV, so it's going to be better than paint, right? You're buying a junker knife from the gas station, that's paint. That's why it comes off there. This stuff, now in my experience, whatever they're using, is fairly durable. It's just not DLC. You know, it's not like a true DLC or even the strength of a Cerakote. Maybe this is Cerakote, right? It just it doesn't really look like it, but it doesn't seem to hold up nearly as well as like a, a Spider-Code DLC. The blade is hollow ground, making it stupidly, stupidly thin behind the edge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is ridiculously thin. Look at this. That is a needle. It's crazy. The tip is not going to be durable. S35VN is a relatively tough stainless steel. Um, so that's good. Uh, it'll be nice and easy to sharpen, and it'll hold an edge really well. Arguably better than almost anything that you're going to find at this price point, right? Uh, at least in this part of the enthusiast, collector, and user knife world, right? Periodically, you know, oh, there's been nice and 20 CV. Yeah, not, but not consistently, right? We don't see a consistent 20 CV blade around the $80 mark. I think those days are coming. In fact, I think the days of seeing 20 CV consistently under $100 are closer to us than we realize. Um, but we don't see that consistently yet. We just see it sometimes, right? They get us to, oh, act now, right? And we do. <laughs> uh, we all do, including me. Um, but yeah, the S35VN is going to be great uh, at this price point. Fantastic. One of the best options that you that you have. My card in this case uh, looks good. There are many options for this. Well, I say many. There's like, there's between three and six, at least. We have a couple of standoffs back here. We have a lanyard hole for lanyardy people. 
And fortunately, it's completely and totally out of the way of the way more important thing, and that thing is the pocket clip. If you don't know, I despise knives, folding knives, that prioritize lanyard holes over pocket clips. Uh, I hate that. And in this case, they have not done that. So thank you for putting this much less significant thing over here. I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't really like lanyard holes all the way around. Lanyard holes all the way around. And the much more important element right here, right? Not saying that pocket clips have to be deep carry all the time, but I like that. Uh, not for tactical reasons, not for shadowy, this or that, because I just want the thing to be completely in my pocket and I don't want the big butt end of a knife sticking out of my pocket like this. I think that's great. Here's, here's all the more knife you're going to see. Nothing. It's great, right? Perfect. This clip, well, it, it is a gooseneck, a goosebill. Uh, it will readily uh, get over the seam of your uh, pockets, easy in and out, no problem. I'm sure I'll get heat for the way that I said that. Uh, lock up on this guy. Very good. Because we have those garage stops, they actually work the same way that, you know, the same, well, they're internal, but the lugs, right? Generally, it's an external stop that you see because they're not garaged in the frame. They brace on either side of the liners, giving it a little bit of extra stability. Is it going to increase the durability or the, you know, allow you to do any crazy pry? No, because the blade geometry is super duper thin but it does create for an incredibly solid lockout which is cool on such a thin blade thin liner lock no up and down play locking up at what is that i don't know it's pretty thin 70 percent doesn't really matter no lock stick easy to disengage the lock because it's cut out deeper on the show side and they've also jimped this is that how you say that i have no idea easy to disengage and we are centered yeah, a couple of quirks here. I kind of just want this thing to be bigger. I want it to be about eight inches if they're going to have a flipper tab on it. And even if they're not going to have a flip, if, if they decided to do a version of this with no flipper tab, I'd want them to move the thumb studs back a little bit and get it out of the cutting path. Um, I'd still want it to be a little bit bigger, but that's because we can carry here in Kansas a little bit larger knives and I just don't want to have to feel cramped. But as it sits, this is still stupidly excellent and it is one of the best value knives out there right now. It's not quite a budget knife, at least not by this channel's standards. Uh, my standard for a budget knife on this channel is 75 or less, so it is over that mark, but oh my gosh. If you like smaller, listen, if you don't like smaller knives, then I, I got nothing for you. But if you <laughs> if you like knives that are, I'm just not even that small. I mean, let's do this again, right? Okay, pretty darn close to the rat too, right? If this knife has worked well for you, you might, there's, it's going to be quirky because this one doesn't have the flipper tab and the thumb stud's not in the cutting path, right? Then again, I think this guy's got a little more cutting edge. Let's put the, let's, let's line up the thumb studs. Okay, so you're about the same as far as where the, right, cut the, if you're going to do a heavy pressure cut. Anyways, roughly the same general territory. The Rat 2 is a 40 what? It's so a forty dollar knife, thirty eight dollar knife, and D two. I'm not even gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna pretend the Aus eight one exists anymore. That's not a real knife to me anymore. If you're gonna buy the rat, buy the D two version, unless you just absolutely have to have the additional stainless qualities of Aus eight. Other than that, Aus eight has a junk composition. But anyways, back to the main topic here. If you like this size of knife, right? Forty ish, thirty eight to forty for the rat two, eighty two, right? It's a little more than double for this guy, but instead of the nylon scales, you get micarta, uh, and instead of D2, you get S35VN, which is stainless and should hold an edge, I believe, for a little bit longer than D2. Uh, that's worth it to me because this is much less maintenance. D2 sometimes you can you can cough on it and it'll it'll rust depending on where you are. S35VN not the case. You'd have to leave it outside. In most places, you have to leave it outside for a while before it started to de develop surface corrosion. Um, not true in any in, in every case, but anyways, yeah. Um, and this isn't made in the United States. I think most people know that now. So Vivi doesn't make knives in the United States, but deal with that information what you will, right? Make up your mind on that. It's for you to decide, not me. Um, 82 bucks though. Yeah, pretty good. Is this a recommendable knife? Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, I almost, I want to put it in cheap knives I like, but it's not quite what I'd call cheap or budget. It's a recommendable knife. 
82 bucks, pretty good. Wish it was bigger, wish it didn't have a flipper tab, wish that thumb stud wasn't in the cutting path, and I wish the V would get rid of that goose neck pocket clip. But everything else is pretty good. Good knife. Nothing, uh, you know, nothing brand new design and look, right? It's typical Civivi, but gosh, the value is just off the charts here. Pick one up. It's almost, almost budget beater territory, right? But you got a cool, you got a nice blade steel. Anyways, thanks so much to Brew City EDC for sending this in for review. You guys have been asking for this for a while. Every time I say anything is a good value, you guys are like, Pintail! You don't know about the Pintail! Well, now I do. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, this knife will be listed right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. Uh, I do recommend this knife. I think this is excellent. Whether you are a longtime collector and enthusiast and knife user, or you're getting it as a gift for somebody who's new, or you're new yourself, this is one of those knives that'll make a lot of different types of people happy. Anyways, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. They'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.